Good afternoon. My name is Baljeet Singh. I am Vice President at the University of Saskatchewan, and I am pleased to be hosting this celebration this afternoon. Although we all are joining virtually in this important event, but let us take a moment to acknowledge that the Vaccine and the Infectious Disease Organization and the University of Saskatchewan is located on the Treaty, 7, uh, Treaty 6 lands and the Methi lands. This also is an opportunity for us to talk about or acknowledge the ancestors, the First Nation ancestors and the Methi Nation who uh, the land to whom this land belonged. And this also is an opportunity for us to commit to develop a better and a respectful relationship with the First Nations and the Methi Nations. In today's event, we are delighted to have uh, three ministers with us. The Honorable Francois Philippe Champagne, Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. The Honorable Melanie Jolie, Minister of Economic Development and Minister of Official Languages. The Honorable Jim Carr, Minister and Special Representative for the Prairies. We also have the President of the University of Saskatchewan, Dr. Peter Stoichev with us. And we also have the Director and the CEO of DIDO, Dr. Volker Gertz, along with Dr. Trina Racine, who is the Associate Director of Vaccine Development at the VIDO. As part of getting the program underway, I'm going to request first Minister Champagne, followed by Minister Jolie and Minister Carr to share this news of the investment at VIDO uh, that they are making today. So Minister Champagne, may I request you to please speak first? Well, thank you very much, and uh, hello, everyone. It's a real, real pleasure to be with you today. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you, Dr. Singh. It's not the first time you and I are together, and it seems every time we see each other, it's for good news. So let's keep that going. It's, it's great to be there, and thank you for your good words. Let me just offer some greetings uh, with, with dear colleagues. First, we have Minister Jolie, as you said, which is with us, and, and it's uh, it's always a delight to be with her. She's, uh, as you all know, she's playing a key role in helping uh, small and medium-sized businesses across our nation and making sure our two official languages are vibrant in, in every part of our country. So uh, it's a real, real delight to be together and, and uh, being uh, making this announcement today. Uh, to our good friend Jim Carr, I would say uh, uh, Saskatchewan and the Prairies are, are lucky uh, to have someone who is strong and, and passionate uh, around the cabinet table. And I can tell you one thing is that when Jim speaks, we all listen. And, and that is a great advantage for the Prairie because uh, he's been a big advocate behind Vido, the University of Saskatchewan, and everything, the whole potential of the Prairies and, and having someone like Jim around the table. Uh, makes a lot of difference. Peter, Mr. President, I, I should say, I must say, but we see to we see each other almost weekly these days. So I feel close to you. Uh, great to be with you. Great to be celebrating the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, you make our life easy. Like I said, we, we are ambassador of your excellence and, and the students, the researchers and faculty. It, it's just great to be with you again. Uh, Volker, what can I say? Uh, your one health concept has remained in my mind. Like I said, I keep repeating it, but I give you all the credit uh, to put, put that in my mind to say animal health, human health, one health. And that's what Vido does best. And that's why it's good to be uh, to be with you. And Dr. Racine, uh, thank you again for all the work you're doing on the vaccine, uh, trying to make uh, Canadians safer. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief because uh, I'm sure you want to hear from Minister Jolie about the real announcement. I'm just the appetizer at this. Uh, um, but I, I just want to say, uh, of course, we're here to highlight some of the key uh, messages we had in the budget and key commitments uh, in, in our fight against COVID-19. And as we are uh, here celebrating, we have to remember that in many parts of our nation, uh, people are fighting a third wave, uh, which is uh, very tough for many, many Canadians. So as I've said many times before throughout the pandemic, uh, the objectives that we have have been very clear. We want to provide Canadians uh, with safe and effective uh, vaccines and treatments and, and to ensure a successful recovery 
uh, both for the economy, but obviously for people. And, and I must say to you, Volker in particular, and, and Mr. President Peter and Dr. Racine and, and uh, Dr. Singh, uh, Vido has been a key partners uh, in our efforts. Uh, obviously we're announcing uh, something new today, but I must say uh, you have been uh, in the journey with us in expanding our biomanufacturing capability domestically uh, way, way before today. And that's why it's good to be uh, doubling down uh, in, in supporting Vido and the excellent work that's being done at the University of Saskatchewan. And you all know this is we're reversing decades of, of, uh, of decline in, in our biomanufacturing sector in Canada. Um, you will recall that as the World Health Organization declared a pandemic on March 11, uh, within 12 days, uh, we were already announcing 200 million to support our, our domestic biomanufacturing capability. And, and within 30 days, we had added another 600 million. So close to a billion was put to really support uh, our biomanufacturing infrastructure in Canada. Uh, and I think we would all agree we need to be more resilient. If there's one lesson learned from that pandemic is that we need to have more domestic capabilities. But the good news is that in budget uh, in budget 2021, budget we announced in the last few days, uh, we doubled up, adding additional uh, uh, sums to make sure that we will complete our mission. Uh, we added, in fact, two billion to support the biomanufacturing sector. Um, so I I'm saying uh, I'm very pleased to say that Vido has been uh, here marking the budget. Uh, for this funding. I'll let my, my good friend and Minister Jolie to say more. I, I think this is good news uh, for the University of Saskatchewan, for, for faculty, for researchers, for, for students. I think it's good news for the city of, Sask of Saskatoon and my good friend Charlie Clark, which texted me uh, with joy uh, already. And it's also good news for the province of Saskatchewan. And Minister Harrison uh, also was texting to say, great that we are uh, supporting. And it's good uh, for uh, Canada as a whole, because this is going to help to uh, improve and, and make sure that we protect the life uh, and, and safety of Canadians across the country. So with that, uh, je vais maintenant uh, passer la parole à ma chère collègue, la ministre Jolie, afin qu'elle nous en dise plus sur l'annonce d'aujourd'hui. Madame la ministre, la parole est à vous. Merci, mon cher collègue. Merci, merci. Uh, Thank you all for uh, being with us today because indeed we have a good news and it is a pleasure to uh, share the stage, the virtual stage with uh, colleagues of mine that I uh, value enormously from uh, François Philippe, of course, that I've uh, been working with uh, for some uh, long time and that I've known for a long time as well. So thank you for making sure that you're defending uh, the life science sector. Uh, and making sure that we have the right investments and that's clearly shown through the budget. So thank you for your leadership. And Jim, it's always a pleasure to be working on uh, really protecting and, and creating jobs across uh, the prairies. And clearly I'll have more to say a bit later about that, but also for your leadership on the fact that we're creating a new prairies agencies uh, through this uh, new budget. So congratulations, my friends, great to see you as well. So, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, well, Volker, Baljeet, Peter, it's, uh, it's great to be with you. Um, there's also a person I would like to acknowledge, which is my parliamentary secretary, Terry Dugold. I know he had the chance to talk uh, to you uh, many times. He's been a leader also on this file. So thank you, Terry. I think he's with us uh, virtually. Um, now, um, Minister Champagne mentioned Budget 2021 is an important step in rebuilding our life science sector. Um, but the priority goes beyond COVID-19 because we know this will build long-term resilience. We know also uh, this will improve our long-term pandemic uh, preparedness, but also it will be creating really good jobs in Saskatoon, but also across Saskatchewan and across the prairies. So um, as the Minister in charge of Economic Development and, and Western Economic Diversification, um, we see firsthand what is being done at Vido in Saskatoon and also across Saskatchewan. Um, and we know that Vito is a prime example of ingenuity uh, and that it, it hosts <coughs> best scientists in the world. Uh, François Philippe was referring a bit earlier to the funding that very early in the pandemic we decided to invest pretty much a billion dollars 
Uh, at the time, it was our colleague, Natalie Baines, that was in charge of that investment. But what happened is for Vito, there was around 35 million that was given to your organization to make sure to increase your biomanufacturing first, first step. And the second step was to make sure that you could really ramp up uh, your research and also the development of, of your vaccine, a made in Canada vaccine. Uh, and I'm really happy that uh, last January, uh, you folks were able to start phase one of your clinical trials. Looking forward to phase two and phase three, uh, but I'm convinced that uh, this also will help us, yes, deal with COVID, but eventually also uh, deal with emerging diseases. As we know that we have to always be prepared for uh, potentially uh, other, uh, other pandemics uh, to come. Now, that being said, um, we know that Saskatoon can play a very important role in protecting the health of our nation. And that's why it's a pleasure for me to announce that the Government of Canada will be investing $59 million over three years in Vito Intervac in Saskatoon. So congratulations. And that's where we all clap virtually. <laughs> well, that money, folks, will be uh, really not only to invest in the great people working within Vito Intervac, but it's for the creation of a national pandemic center in Saskatoon. Uh, so that will help create and develop and, and manufacture by solutions like vaccines. That's the first point. And the second one is really to help expand the containment facility uh, of Vito and bring it from level three to level four. Now I know that uh, Vito has been advocating for this for years that the only other containment facility level four in the country was and is in Winnipeg. So the fact that we're recognizing that and that uh, we are actually investing in the infrastructure, infrastructure to make that happen is not only good news because uh, of course it positions Saskatoon and Saskatchewan uh, and the University of Saskatchewan as a very uh, important leader, but I would say it doubles our uh, contain, you know, our facility. Uh, and therefore, it, it, it really uh, helps uh, uh, meet the objective that Francois Philippe was mentioning regarding our leadership in the sector. So, um, we're investing in Saskatoon, we're investing in Saskatchewan. Uh, we know that uh, we can be all proud of, of, as Canadians, of having a fantastic team, facility, great expertise, in Saskatchewan that will make sure that our health is uh, well taken care of, but also that uh, uh, we can have top-notch uh, experts that are able uh, to position Saskatoon as one of the major capitals in the country when it comes to the life science sector. So the future is bright for Saskatoon and Saskatchewan. Congratulations, folks. Merci à tous pour votre travail. Et maintenant, ça me fait plaisir de passer la parole à Jim Carr. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, to now, um, uh, you know, pass the mic, as we could say, uh, to Jim Carr. So, Jim, take it away. Hi, everybody. What a pleasure to be with my colleagues in Saskatoon on a Friday afternoon, however, virtually. But this is how we do business these days. We haven't seen each other in more than a year. Uh, we meet through these machines. We have all kinds of conversations on devices but we actually haven't been together as a group in a very long time. And I can't think of a better way to have this virtual chat than on this very bright day in the prairie. Uh, so welcome colleagues to the heart of the prairie. I'm here in my home in Winnipeg in traditional Treaty 1 territory of the Anishinaabe people and the home of the Métis. But you know, when I think about the prairies, about the region I represent in my current portfolio and my home. I think about the diversity of the land, of its people, what we do, and what we produce. I think of Dr. Michael, Michael Houghton, Nobel Prize laureate, and his pathbreaking work with the hepatitis C vaccine with colleagues at the University of Alberta. I think of the National Microbiology Lab in my own city of Winnipeg, where we 
fought the Ebola virus and had path-breaking success internationally. And I think mostly today about the work that is happening right here in Saskatoon at Vito Winterback, the work that has been on the leading edge of pandemic research. Vito has earned a reputation as one of the world's most advanced infectious disease research facilities. And this is not just a prairie success story. This is a great story for Canada and indeed internationally. And Vito has been fighting infectious diseases for more than 45 years. The organization has six world first vaccines to its credit and was the first facility in Canada to receive clearance to harvest a sample of the COVID-19 virus. From the very earliest days of Dr. Biglin's directorship in the 70s, Vito has come a very long way. And the Government of Canada has been pleased to support you every step on your journey. We supported the initial construction of the International Vaccine Centre in 2011. We boosted the support through the Canada Foundation for Innovation in 2017. And at the start of the pandemic, we invested yet again to help the center expand and renovate its animal vaccine production facility to meet the standards required for producing human vaccines. And now, as Melanie has said, through budget 2021, we are helping Vito to take the next step. I am so pleased to be part of this history-making announcement today. This is yet another demonstration of what we can accomplish when we work together towards meeting a common goal. So I want to congratulate the University of Saskatchewan. Volker, you must be having a wonderful week. And I think we're probably going to hear about it. And Peter, from you too, Dr. Racine, Dr. Singh, I want to just say how we're sharing in your excitement. Because we know that it is through that excitement that we are going to improve the lives of people and how pleased the Government of Canada is to continue supporting your very, very important work. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much, Ministers Champagne, Minister Jolie, and Minister Carr. Your pride of Vido has shown through your words, so heartfeltly spoken. Thank you so very much. This investment, which is brilliant and visionary, is going to transform the way we do bioinnovation in this country. This is going to strengthen the bioinnovation ecosystem in Canada. This aligns with this government's commitment to strengthen the bioinnovation system in this country. And this investment is going to inspire the globally leading team led by Trina Racine and Volker Gertz at Vido. And they are going to make the best of this investment in the coming days to protect the health of the Canadians from any infectious disease threat in the coming years. So thank you very much. Our deepest gratitude for this investment and for you three doing such a major work on this file. Thank you so very much. Before we go to the roundtable discussion today, uh, we have a video on video that captures some of its accomplishments. I'm nearly certain we need a full length documentary to capture everything that video has done. But let us take a quick look at the video that we have today. Uh, would somebody please roll the video for our audience? Thank you very much. We are one of Canada's largest research organizations focused on infectious diseases, both affecting humans and animals, and really during the pandemic have become one of Canada's go-to places for COVID-19 research. Vito currently operates uh, Canada's largest high containment laboratory. It's one of um, the country's major science infrastructures, and it has allowed us to rapidly respond to COVID-19. We have been able within 12 months to work with more than 80 companies. We were the first in the country to isolate the virus, the first in the country to establish an animal model, and now we're the first university organization to have a vaccine in clinical trials. 
everybody has stepped up during the pandemic and really contributed to Vido's success and uh, the accomplishments we have made over the last year. I knew this was uh, a problem I could not solve on my own. My expertise is in human respiratory viruses and the ferret model. I'm really grateful that Vito Intervac has um, given us a home to do our research right now. And that's not only given me a place to work on SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19, but it's given a training opportunity to the future generation of scientists. You need to be highly trained and you need your staff to know how to work with um, these pathogens, but you also need the facilities. So you need the actual rooms to be built properly with the right airflow. So Vito Intervac has both. Much like a fire department, we need to have infrastructure and trained firefighters in place to be able to rapidly respond to these diseases as they emerge. We're currently constructing a biomanufacturing facility that will allow us to manufacture vaccines and therapeutics right here in Saskatoon. And we're also seeing Vito become a key center in Canada dealing with emerging infectious diseases of the future. And these will be both affecting humans and animals. And with more than 45 years of expertise in that human-animal interface, Vito is well positioned with these exciting upgrades to our infrastructure to take on a role as Canada's Centre for Pandemic Research. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move into the roundtable uh, discussion portion of the event uh, uh, now. Uh, it's not very often we have three federal ministers and a university president and two leading vaccinology scientists with us, so we will make the best use of their presence. Uh, the plan here is that uh, I would like to ask uh, a question one by one uh, from each of you. Uh, then uh, after the answer to that question, you are welcome to provide any response or additional clarification or comments uh, to that, please. Um, if it, I may, uh, Minister Champagne, I would like to start with you, please. And uh, so the question is that uh, Monday's federal budget provided a significant investment in biotechnology. What is the vision of your government for this sector and its ability to protect the health and welfare of Canadians? Please. Well, first of all, Dr. Singh, uh, I think you were all seeing us smiling. You make us proud, uh, University of Saskatchewan and Vido. I was looking at the video and really, really, really proud uh, of everything you're doing. Listen, um, we're going to double down. Uh, if, if you look at what are the big challenge of humanity today, uh, on one end, you have COVID-19, and on the other end, you have climate change. And, and the, uh, the breakthrough solutions are going to come from science, technology, and innovation. And I think, uh, you know, certainly for us, we have seen, and I said it a bit at the beginning, uh, domestic biomanufacturing is key to ensure more resilience. And I think the work that Vido has been doing for decades now, uh, that's why we want to expand and create a network of facilities around the country, which is going to be uh, crucial, uh, whatever may come next. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't think anyone has. We're seeing different things happening. But one thing that I know is that the mission we have given ourselves is to see uh, how we can reshore or onshore as much of the critical components that we can have, whether it's adjuvant, lipids, syringes, uh, fill and finish capacity. And I'm happy, Volker, to see a bit of fill and finish there uh, so that not only phase one, we can move to biomanufacturing, you know, to manufacturing indeed in, in a fill and finish capacity. So I, I think that's really, Dr. Singh, the vision that we have is, is to become as resilient as possible. We won't be able to do everything in Canada, but we are certainly going to be able to do what is most crucial to ensure the health and safety of Canadians for decades to come. And, and what I think about Vido and Dr. Um, uh, I, I have to say that again, uh, Volker, uh, the One Health concept just makes so much sense. I mean, you, you convinced me the first time and I keep repeating it, but We've seen it's the transmission from animal to human and this one health concept saying you cannot look at that separately. You have to bring that together. And I think if you add that with uh, the position that Canada is, is leading on artificial intelligence, 
if you put your one health concept with artificial intelligence, I, I think we're on to uh, something great. And, and I'm so pleased uh, that we could be here today to support you in the journey and the researcher, the scientists and the students and faculty. Uh, we're on to something great. And, and I just want to say thank you because uh, you are key. If I think, you know, the message I would say, let's seize the moment. I think there's never been a better time uh, to, to invest in biomanufacturing. I would say let's be ambitious, and I don't need to say that to people like you because we're here today because you are ambitious. And let's make sure that Vido will play a key part, a, a key part in, in, in ensuring the health and safety of Canadians and the prairies uh, for, for decades to come. So with that, Dr. Insane, I'll turn over to you. Merci encore, and uh, I cede the floor to you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it, it, this is interesting uh, point you make that these investments will strengthen us and we will do lots of things within the country. We may not be able to do everything, but this investment will allow Vido to form partnerships with other countries with leading institutes to make the world safer place from infectious disease. So thank you, Minister, for those comments. Um, I would like to follow up to what Minister Carr was uh, speaking about, some of the distinctive microbiology facilities uh, in, in the West. Um, Minister Carr, we have Lee Ka Shing Institute of Virology at the University of Alberta. You mentioned National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg. And of course, we have Vaccine and Infection Disease Organization in, in Saskatoon. Would you reflect on what it, is it about the prairies? that has fostered hmm. this strength in biotechnology and vaccine developments? You know, I've often wondered why it is that world-class invention, institutions, performances, clusters, and organizations develop in places where you wouldn't expect them to. I think in my own community of the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, which became one of the great ballet companies in the world, you may ask why Winnipeg? You can look at some of the great research institutes in the world. The Mayo Clinic, 90 miles south of Minneapolis. Well, I think there's actually an answer. And the answer is people. That people begin to establish reputation. And their reputation then becomes a magnet that attracts others. And before you know it, you have a cluster which attracts others, which spins off into industrial development, into research excellence. And it may not always be easy to explain or rational or linear, but I think usually it comes down to the brilliance of people. And you know, here in the prairie, we're very well known for our natural resources. We're very well known for what we grow, what we produce, what we export to the world. But increasingly, we're becoming known as a place that attracts brilliant people. And in this example, brilliant scientists who not only apply their knowledge, their discipline, their brains, their imaginations to their local environment that nurtures them, but the impact of what they do is felt internationally. So even if we can't be precise about the cause, we sure can celebrate the result. And it's just such a thrill for me to be with here with Francois Philippe and Melanie here in the heart of the prairie to talk about world class brains in Saskatchewan and how that will emanate well beyond its borders to give reputation and hope for people around the world. Thank you, Minister Carr. That's uh, thank you very much. Uh, quite often, I say, who would have thought when Vido was established that it will make a vaccine to protect Canadians from a pandemic? Then, in the next breath, I say, that's exactly what somebody thought 50 years ago that someday this institution will make a vaccine and protect the health of the Canadians. So, vision uh, is is so critical. Uh, thank you very much. I. I now I go to Minister Yoli uh, for one question, if if that's okay. Uh, Minister, what impact do you anticipate this investment will have on the economy in Western Canada and the nation, 
as we move out of the pandemic and into a recovery and a growth uh, phase. Well, thank you, doctor. Um, I want to follow up the very inspiring uh, answer Jim just gave you. Um, of course, it's all about people. I think also when you add timing to it, uh, and it becomes extremely important, uh, impactful, I would say. Why do I say that? Well, we know we're in right now in a situation where we completely depend on other countries when it comes to biomanufacturing. This is a situation that never again we will be putting ourselves in. And Vito is part of the solution to deal with not only the threat we're dealing with right now, but also future threats. And in that sense, it is our collective responsibility to see the timing of the pandemic to make sure that we have a legacy of building a fantastic center in Saskatoon and that Saskatoon will be in charge of protecting the health of our nation. You folks have the expertise. We as a government have a responsibility to invest in you. And that's exactly what we are doing today. Now, this will have an impact on your lives and it's great to see you, Trina. Um, now, it will have an impact also on the entire community of Saskatoon because as Jim said, more experts will come. More families will establish themselves in Saskatoon. This will trigger small businesses businesses that, you know, people that will want to launch business endeavors um, that are linked to the life science sector. This will create growth. And eventually, this will help the economy of Saskatoon, of Saskatchewan and the prairies. And so it is, it is rare that we're able to have so many benefits by taking one decision. But I'm convinced that the decision that Jim, Francois, and I are convening to you today will be seen in 10, 15, 20 years by the generation of uh, young people in Saskatoon, like so, as something that will have changed the, um, the the path of the community. And so, also, I just wanted to make sure to uh, convey the good news that we are creating a new uh, regional development agency for the prairies. Uh, Western uh, diversification will have new means, more money, more people, more resources to invest in the talent and uh, really uh, the, uh, the fantastic, fantastic opportunities that we're seeing across Saskatchewan. I'll have more to say in the coming weeks about it, but for us, making sure that uh, the prairies are able to uh, protect jobs as we speak, but also create jobs and uh, make sure that there is a path to a strong recovery is extremely important for a government. So that is also one more step we're taking in the direction to make sure that the future is bright for the prairies and for Saskatchewan and Saskatoon. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you, uh, Minister. Any comments or response to follow on Minister Yoli's comments? Great. Thank you. Now, um, it's not very often that a vice president gets to ask a question from his president in a public space. So I'm going to make it a difficult one. Uh, Peter, uh, why is it important to have an investment like this at a university in a lab such as Vido uh, from your perspective? So thank you, Belgique, and uh, I will ask. The, I will answer the question. Thanks for asking it. But I, I wish I could actually spend all my time thanking the people on this call and and so many others for this support. But thank you to Minister Champagne and Car, uh, Car and Jolie, not only for what you just said, which was tremendous and and memorable, but for your vision and for your leadership. And thank you, Volker and. Thank you, Trina, and all the people who work with you as well for your scientific leadership and Belgium, of course, for yours as our Vice President of Research at the University of Saskatchewan. Look, we are delighted with this announcement, um, but I'd like to say, and it's been alluded to, you know, it's not about us, actually. Uh, we're delighted because 
we can use this funding through the expertise of a world-class lab like Vito for the benefit of Canadians and, and more. Uh, we call ourselves the University of the World Needs. It's not a boast. It's an, in, it's an indication of the fact that we're thinking about what we, would, what we can provide as a university, what the world needs and what we can provide. And this is an excellent example of it. But I better answer the question. Um, so obviously, universities do not provide the only settings for major world-class labs like Vito is. There are many other models. We see the same thing with synchrotrons. Some are at universities and some are not, but I think there are many benefits to having a lab in this case, such as Vito at a university, in this case, such as the University of Saskatchewan. Here are a few. Um, universities, of course, train undergraduate and graduate students and postdocs to work in a high level lab like a Vito and those trainees have experience as a result of that. And they go on and take positions in related industries as well as, of course, positions in universities. So Vito benefits from the supply of the university's trainable talent and industry provides uh, get, gets benefit from having access to this trained talent that, that a Vito can then provide universities. And I'm thinking here, not exclusively, but particularly of U15 research intensive medical doctoral universities. Universities, array of vaccine related faculties and academic units. In our case at this university, that means veterinary medicine, medicine, pharmacy and nutrition, toxicology, life sciences programs, and related faculty in colleges like arts and science and elsewhere on campus. We have a school for public policy, a school for public health, and for environment and sustainability. A Department of Community Health and Epidemiology and Medicine. We have nursing, and that list goes on. Um, and that cluster of related excellence, that's what Minister Champagne is referring to as the One Health combination, creates a really diverse research ecosystem that's not available so easily to labs that are outside the setting of a research intensive university. And I'd add to that that the specific colleges and schools this when you look at the fact that some universities might have some of these units like vet med or public policy or toxicology or pharmacy but very few if any have happen to have all of them together and i think this is a great benefit for uh, a, a superb lab such as Vito. I'd add just a couple of other things. Um, Vito would benefit from being in a university by being eligible for CFI funding and the major science initiatives program that's within CFI. And it wouldn't be eligible if it weren't part of a university. And of course, the federal government provided, I'd call it visionary support to CFI in this week's budget as well for bioinnovation infrastructure. And I would suspect, and some of the comments I've heard just now allude to this, that governments also recognize that through their support of a lab such as Vito that's at a university, that the funding will directly and indirectly benefit students and faculty who are involved in the work. I think that's one of the reasons why we have benefited from the support from all three levels of government. The enormous and imperative support in the federal budget just announced and the support from the province of Saskatchewan, the city of Saskatoon as well, because they see that direct and indirect benefit to, to students and others. And then finally, being situated in a university such as the University of Saskatchewan supports many international partnerships that are necessary for work of this global significance to be conducted. I was with one of uh, Volker and Trina's colleagues in Seoul, South Korea to sign an MOU with the International Vaccine Institute at Seoul National University in South Korea a while ago. That's an example of such a partnership and their collaborations among university labs as well that create the kinds of synergies that such world-class work requires. So we've signed a recent MOU with McMaster's Global Nexus team. That's a Great example of it. Biology labs as well, and Vito works in close collaboration with them. I'd say 
Baljeet, all of this enabled by the university environment. Thank you very much, uh, President Stoichev, uh, and uh, that's great. Uh, let me go now uh, for my next question to Volker Gertz. Uh, Volker is a long standing friend of mine, and uh, he is one of the most hardworking academic I have ever met. His ability to lead with a vision and put his own uh, work ethic up front is, is, a, is very impressive. Now, Volker, if I may ask you, uh, could you speak in bit practical terms uh, for the public? How will we do? Uh, using the significant support from all three levels of the government, be able to protect the health of Canadians and their animals uh, during any future infectious disease challenge uh, we might have in this country. Yeah, thanks very much, Baljeet, uh, for those kind words. Let me start first, though, by thanking all three ministers for your support and for the funding and your government, um, and really for this vote of confidence in Tobito and and the research that's going on here. You can imagine it's a, it's been a fantastic week. It's uh, we've worked so hard for today and and this is really going to change what we do here at Vito and how in the future we will be even better able to support Canada's response to any new emerging disease whether it's affecting human or animals as we heard. And also as we heard in the in the video Vito really has become now one of the go-to places for COVID-19 research and that is only possible because of all the people that are working here. And so we, we alluded to this earlier, but I just wanted to take this moment to thank everybody here at Vito. I think we have a fantastic team. We have highly dedicated people working here that have really donated their weekends, their nights all through last year to make all the work possible that we've, we've accomplished over the last year. So you can see I get emotional. This is such a great day for us, but it's really because of the people that are working here. And so, of course, we also have seen with this pandemic that um, there are gaps in Canada's capacity to, to not only in research, but also in vaccine manufacturing and, and developing new appro approaches to controlling these diseases. And so this funding will now allow us to, to fill some of these gaps. It will enable us to rapidly respond on the day of a new disease emerging somewhere in the world. We can immediately begin the research here. We can start very early working with animals from which these diseases often jump into humans, as we heard as part of this One Health concept. We can immediately start manufacturing in-house um, vaccine candidates, clinical grade material, which then can advance us rapidly into human clinical trials. And we all know how important time is in the context of pandemics. And lastly, by upgrading part of our containment area to to the highest level, to the level four, we will be able to work with essentially any pathogen that might emerge in the future. And why is that important? Because it will allow us to not only rapidly respond, but it will also allow us to, to think about how as a country and how as a research organization, we can help to make even vaccines or treatments for diseases before they even emerge. So really I'm challenging a little bit our thinking of you know, why are we always responding to a disease after it emerges? Can we not use science to maybe predict what the next pathogen might look like and develop a solution today rather than a year after it emerges? And that's really all about what Vito is doing here, how we see this Canadian Pandemic Center being able to transform the way we respond to emerging diseases and, and help really Canadians be better prepared for the future. And we're so excited for this funding and all the contrib contributions that we have received from all the supporters of this endeavor. And I'm looking forward to all the research that's going to happen here in the future. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Volker. Thank you very much for your leadership. Um, and the last uh, uh, question uh, for this roundtable, I'm going to take to Dr. Trina Racine. You know, Trina is a brilliant scientist and she's part of uh, Folker's high performing leadership team and she leads the vaccine development part at Vido. Uh, Trina, if I may, I want to follow up on Minister Yoli's comment on the effects of this investment attracting talent to, to Saskatoon and new families coming to Saskatoon. What attracted you to Vido uh, to, to do the work here? And how do you think this investment will continue that trend of uh, uh, high quality talent coming to Saskatoon to work at Vido? 
Thank you so much, Baljeet. Yeah, so a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to come to Vito as a visiting scientist to do some work in the level three facility here. And I had a chance to meet and work with some of Vito's um, scientists and technicians. I was treated so well during my time at Vito and I was very impressed with everyone that I met and with the facility itself. And I realized how much Vito had to offer. And when I had a chance to talk with Dr. Gertz and heard his vision for Vito of building the vaccine um, development group and that it would focus on bridging the gap between discovery research and clinical development, I knew that this was something that I needed to be a part of. And the idea of building a, a vaccine manufacturing facility that could produce both veterinary and human vaccines with a using a multitude of different platforms is a fantastic idea. And it will fill a gap uh, in the Canadian research and bio uh, manufacturing community. And so the funding that Vito has received um, from all levels of government will lead to many new jobs. Um, first with the trade staff hired to build our new facilities, and then with the highly qualified professionals that will work within the facilities. We've already started building our biomanufacturing team, which includes bioprocessing and quality specialists. And expanding the expanding capacity brought about by the new facilities will also lead to more training opportunities that will help develop the next generation of scientists. Um, to help with this, we, we have a plan to develop a fellowship program that will attract top scientists and that will expand and advance our uh, research expertise. And so together, I think the additional infrastructure and added professionals um, will strengthen our robust discovery research programs and will enable us to move programs into the clinic and towards licensure more quickly and in a more cost effective manner. And so I, the other thing I wanted to point out is like our, so our COVID-19 uh, response has raised Vito's profile and has allowed us to expand our research collaborations in Canada. And for example, as Minister Carr pointed out, um, we have worked with the National Microbiology Lab in Winnipeg and with Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto on the isolation of the first uh, SARS-CoV-2 strain. We were also working collaboratively with international companies and organizations like CEPI and the World Health Organization. And we will continue to grow this network um, to coordinate and strengthen our research and response to future emerging threats. And so with that, I just, again, I like to um, kind of uh, repeat what Volker said. Uh, thank you so much to the ministers here on the, on the line and to the federal government and the provincial and city municipal governments as well for, for all their faith in us. And we won't let you down, I promise. Wow. So well said. Thank you so very much. And uh, and uh, I think this brings me to the end of this roundtable session. And I would like to thank our honored guests, Minister Champagne, Minister Gioli, Minister Kurt, President Stoichev, Dr. Racine, and Volker Gertz, and all those who have joined us online today to, to celebrate this major investment by Government of Canada in Vido and at University of Saskatchewan. What a great week it has been. Uh, considering the commitment the government has shown uh, to the bio innovation sector, to the life science sector, committing large sums of investment into that area. It's uh, incredible to think that government of Canada has invested more than $100 million since the beginning of the pandemic at University of Saskatchewan at Vido, of course, to really uh, protect the health of the Canadians and to prepare to tackle any such future challenges that may come at our doors. Thank you, ministers, for your support and for your vote of confidence. We do know that Canadians are generous by nature. Our citizens have donated more than $3 million to complement what you all have provided from the government, all three levels of the government, to support the work at Vido. There have been donations, small and large, from across this country because people do believe that what they are investing in is truly remarkable for this country to strengthen the health of the animals and people and our environment using the One Health Principle. And that's why everybody is looking up to Vido and they're stepping up to support it in so many ways. They are on supports coming because they believe that the work being done at Vido is going to ensure our food security, is going to ensure health of Canadians, is going to make us a better nation. Within that context, I want to go back to President Stoichev's comments. He was talking about the wide, broad spectrum of disciplines at University of Saskatchewan. That really led us to develop a very bold university plan where we said to be the university the world needs. 
I want to say it again. University of Saskatchewan's aspiration is to be the university the world needs. The reason for that, of course, is the work which has been happening at Vido and at many other institutes located at the University of Saskatchewan in collaboration with many federal laboratories which are housed at University of Saskatchewan. The collaborative spirit of the Prairie Institution is going to do wonderful things in the coming years, and we really thank you uh, for your support and vote of confidence. And uh, thank you very much to all the guests for joining us today, and I wish you a happy and a safe weekend. Uh, thank you very much.